Hi everyone! Hi! Welcome to another episode of the PH Dyer vlog. Um, so as you can see my surroundings are quite different. As I've said I've been kind of slowly getting more serious with Jarrett. Maybe not that slow honestly it's kind of very quick. Um, but you know like I said I'm just diving in. Hopefully things will work out. You know, I was careful with my marriage, and look what happened with that, so. Anyway, um, so I'm here. I'm actually in that room right across here that you can't see, uh, dyeing the yarn. I am packaging advents and trying to get them out the door. Um, the other woolen women are working on the advents as well. We ran late because Mommy got sick after um, Ryan Beck, and then... Uh, Sammy's been sick off and on, and then obviously my life is in major upheaval, so I had to move the dye studio and, you know, things changed drastically. Um, I do want to put this on so you can see it. So, I'm sure you've seen in the making update, I finished my Llama Love sweater. For those of you who haven't checked it out, check out uh, Christy Glass. Show me a Rhinebeck sweater video. We are in it. I have not blocked this yet, but I plan on blocking it very soon. I don't have my blocking boards with me here, but I am moving tomorrow, so I'll have them then. But uh, wait, let me see if I can step back. Here's my sweater. So I want to get a little length here when I block it, which I think should be good. I don't remember if I showed you this yet, so I'm showing you it again just in case. And I'm very excited about it. I think um, I think if I had to go back, which I think I've mentioned this, I wouldn't have done the short row shaping in the back. I feel like it's making this hug my neck a little more. Um, but it is comfortable. I love the fuzzy llamas. I added the mohair on there, so that's really great. Um, and it's really warm. It's held double with an 80-10 time cashmere blend. Uh, so it's about a DK weight. Oh, it's really, really warm. Um, you know, I wore it the second day of Rhinebeck because the first day was quite hot. It was like in the mid-70s. So the second day I wore it, and it was perfect. It was like really cold out, and I thought it was absolutely perfect. So that's my finished sweater that I may or may not have shown you. And now for my new sweater that I'm working on. Well, my new but old sweater because this is from like last year or something. Um, this is the Half Moon Tea. And I think it's coming out so great. Look at it. It's like a little shirt. Oh, love when it starts to look like a little shirt. Um, so I gave it some length. Honestly, the crop probably would have ended about here. I gave it a little more length. This is in a Robin's Roost um, Northern Lights colorway, and then this black is just something I messed up and had to redo, um, during my time when I first started dyeing, so I used it in the shirt. Normally it calls for three colors, I've done two, so, um, instead of having, because I just couldn't think of a third color, if I had had, like, another pink or, like, this type of seafoam color, I might have used it, but at the time I didn't, I just used these two. Um, so I'm actually doing the ribbing at the bottom right now. I've just barely cast it on or switched colors for the, uh, the ribbing. I didn't go down a needle size. I haven't had my needles and I just have to work with what I have. That happens a lot to me. Like I'm supposed to go down a needle size or two and I, I totally don't. Um, but yeah, it's coming along nice. I'm doing the ribbing. And then I'm on to the sleeves. There's a little bit of color work in the sleeves. And I think I would have given it more length, but I mean, honestly, I probably could have. This is a lot of yarn. This will go far. But I wasn't sure if I wanted like maybe three quarter length sleeves or if I just want to keep it short sleeves. I gave myself a little more yarn for a little more options. Um, let's see if I can. There we go. Uh, what I've been religiously working on lately are my pond skating socks. And these were also from last season. Uh, and I've just picked them back up. 
the heel was already in. I used a flegal heel, which actually now that I've done the heel flap and gusset uh, from the Crazy Sock Lady, I probably won't do a flegal again. Um, the fit is just like okay. It's There's no real arch support or anything like that. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I don't hate it. I, I like the flegal heel, but I think uh, heel flap and gusset is definitely my favorite with that video tutorial I used for my lily pad socks. But the color, doesn't it remind you of like an icy pond? All those blues and like that plummy purple in there. And there's Sammy's little uh, snowflake. So I'm really enjoying these. They were cuffed down. They're just a vanilla knit sock. I only have like an inch or so left before I'll start decreasing for the toe. So, and I put those in my bag from the Toad Hollows. Just a little drawstring bag I really like. Um, what else? So I haven't worked on this in a long time. It's been mostly the half moon tee and those socks. But, wait, I'm all tangled here with all these ends. I haven't looked at this either in a long time. Oh, wow, it's really pretty. Um, this is that Winter Lights shawl. I kind of, so right when my life got really super complicated, I had been doing the honeycomb section, and I feel like I just got so overwhelmed with everything else that I could not continue knitting this and I really wish I had I might still work on it I mean I say that but then like we're gonna have winter colors which we do and I'm gonna really need to focus on knitting up the winter colors we have the new uh, woolen winter picnic coming out um, and I gave you guys a sneak peek the other day in our stories you guys were the first to see it um, but I, I would have loved to work on this, but I almost feel like I might have to work on it later on down the line because there's just too much going on. Let me grab those colors so you can see them. Okay. So there's a lot in this collection. I feel like, what is there, two, four, six, seven, actually. There's normally five or six, but I added in a blue. I felt like it really needed a blue tonal. And, um, so before I dive into that collection, just want to show you here. Maybe it'll be better if I put you over here. There we go. So the light gets it right. There we go. Um, so this is vintage toy shop sock sets. Uh, I just wanted to show you what, what this look like. Wow, my hair's crazy. Um, so vintage toy shop sock sets. Uh, it's on a 75-25 superwash merino nylon base. And I just thought, like, this is the most popular winter colorway I've ever made. I gave it that really nice plummy vintage plum minis, so for heels, toes, and cuffs. Uh, so these are now available in sock sets. So if you're a vintage toy shop lover, like everybody else and like me, you might want to make a pair of socks. Uh, mommy made gloves out of them, fingerless mitts. They were really nice. But on to the new collection. So, let me see if I can grab them all so you can see them together. Um, okay. So, here they are. And, so, I don't, haven't worked out the names yet. I have them written down on, like, what I think I want to name them. But this is Coco in the Snow, I think. And it's just like hot chocolate colors. It's got a nice speckle going on there. It's got this like ivory tone to it for like that nice frothy top that you sort of get with hot cocoa. And then another kind of neutrally color. So if you checked out the inspo, you would have seen like these beautiful lanterns laid out on the blanket to, you know, eat and have a picnic in the snow. Um, and so I've taken that gorgeous like metal silver color of the lanterns. And then obviously the lantern light is speckled in there. So this is a really nice 
neutrally kind of color. And I'll show you some pairings afterwards that I think this goes really good with. But yeah, it has like that ivory tone to it and of course that silvery color. I mean, silver and gold, right? How the song goes. Uh, we have, mm, see, and this is another one I don't know. So there was a blue kettle in the inspo picture. And so I've created a blue tonal using three different blues to give it. So I've used like a brilliant blue, but I've toned it down with a twilight gray and uh, black to make it a little more muted. Um, so there's this blue and I'm, I've got some tonals because I feel like I never do enough tonals and I really wanted to be able to put like sweater kits and stuff together. And that's beautiful. Um, this green, again, I'm going to have to think up the names. I'm really loving this green. Like I'm going to have to make a sweater in this green. Anyone else? Like, wow, this is a green, like a Christmas green. Gorgeous. Um, this is definitely called my red woolen mittens because in the inspo the mittens were red. They're like a fair isle mitten and it has this deep deep red speckle throughout. Not a heavy speckle, just a little bit here and there. But this is really a nice red for Christmas. So if you're into like the traditional red and green, look how pretty that is. And then if you want to add this to it, it's perfect. Or even cocoa in the snow. And then actually out of my whole, the whole collection, this one is my favorite and I have no idea what I'm going to name it yet. Um, Maybe like woolenberry or something cute. But it's like a cranberry type berry color. Like that gorgeous color that you see. Winterberry, that's what I should name it. But I feel like somebody had a winterberry. I'm going to have to think about it. Any names come to mind? Something? Uh, but this is my favorite. If I'm going to make a sweater, it's this one or the green one. And honestly, like... They go great. Like, I just think any of those would be fantastic. There's also this. Or swap it out for the lantern one. Lots of choices. But this one, wow. Like, it's like this gorgeous cranberry-ish purpley color. Um, and then this is a woolen winter picnic. Because I have to always make, like, a skein that's, like, encompassing the whole collection, right? This has that gorgeous blue in there. You know, it has the green, the red, some brown. It's like a woodsy, woodsy skein. I like it a lot. Yep. So, and is that, oh, and it has some like deep black under there too. Um, so I really like this one as well. And this can go with a lot of different pairings. Since it contains a lot of the colors in there, you know, you can really mix it up and match it with other ones. Um, obviously this. And then, of course, with the neutrals. Um, with blue. Or blue and red, blue and green, and, or, you know, you could add a neutral or something in there, but, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm going to put the kits up, that's the collection, the new one, and I'm really excited about it, we also have, uh, which I don't have with me at the moment, I apologize, we have, uh, gizmo like gremlin hat kits which i'm gonna put in a bulky base and a dk i think option and it comes with this really great like fawn colored pom-pom and so i'll put up hat kits for that and then right now i'm actually in the back trying to create a uh, sugar plum village type of 
hat kit. So it'll be like, think like those pastel type purples and like a winter wonderland type uh, theme. And Samantha is putting her little ginger friend with it with like a little gingerbread house and stuff. So you'll be able to get like a set of stitch markers to match. So uh, I'm really, really excited about that one. I gotta, I gotta get on that. So, the last thing is my stitching. Um, I've just gotten a little bit further on the roof. I'm such a slow stitcher. I mean, when I really used to put my mind to it, I really loved it. But, honestly, it's just one of those crafts. Like, I have to be so in the mood to do this. Rather than knitting is, like, mindless most of the time. Unless you're doing something complicated. But, it's looking really good. I just want to kind of work on it slowly and enjoy the little bit of time that I spend with it. Uh, the busier I get dying, the more I do not have time, but that's, that's okay. So I just try to like enjoy the time that I do have with it. Um, we have shows like back to back for each month scheduled. So things are just very busy, which we're really excited about. Um, And yeah, uh, I think I might put it down and pick up that Christmas advent that I had before. I really, uh, I really wanted to do that. So um, I might put this down and then pick that up if I can manage it. Uh, so we'll see. But yeah, I think that is it. Um, I gave you a, some pictures, a little bit of pictures about like uh, what was going on with the new temporary like dye studio situation. Um, but yeah, aside from that, there is not much new. So I will, I will talk to you guys next week and thank you for your patience. I am getting your Patreon minis out, um, with the move. It just prolonged things a little bit, but I am dying them tonight. So they should be out in the next couple days and then you'll be like getting a whole other set again in just two weeks or so because... Uh, the first week of December, you'll be receiving November's minis. <laughs> so we're just a little bit over the first week of the month when I would normally send them out. It's just been really stressful. So thank you for your patience. You will get your minis. Don't worry. Um, I have not forgotten about you at all. I have been working tirelessly to try to film and try to pick myself back up, even though it's been so hard. Um, so thank you for your patience. Okay, uh, I will talk to you next week. Bye.
was rough. It was so rough. Wait, I'm filming you. Say hi. 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 You survived. Yes, I did. Thank you. Or actually, give me that one. I'm gonna put that in the front seat with me. Thank you. Okay. Well, pedicures for now. But. Yeah, I see. Well, apparently, there's an illegal substance called MMA, and they used it on my nails last time I had them filled. And I didn't know until they tried to remove them, and it took most of my nail, and now I have like a shred of nail left, and it's really painful. And it took two hours to remove them, and apparently, it's illegal, so now I need to report them to the cosmetology board. And poor Amber and Chris here had to endure the two hour torture starving but the lady was so great she did a great job for how so crazy I mean they sort of look normal now but oh my gosh was it pain? It was so pain. only me like I just don't understand why my luck is so bad I really don't know. what are you doing Amber? Who, me? yeah what are you doing? oh I'm playing slots oh <laughs> she's, <playing laughs> she's gambling in the back <laughs> we're gonna go get some I know we're gonna go get some food so we're headed to the Charlotte Airport in North Carolina. It was a long drive, like, what is it, an hour and a half or two hours? Hour. Um, yeah, we had a really nice time. Some unexpected things happened with my nails and some other things, but uh, that's life. I'm mad. She said she won't come live with me. So I won't come live with her. She pay. tried to hold me hostage, but I made it out alive. She is now driving. <laughs> <laughs> but I am doing some car knitting. We got some Starbucks. I'm doing um, some driving. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Amber. And I have my Chelsea Yarns t-shirt on. And I'm excited to get home. I fully move on Tuesday. I'll film that for you guys. And then I just have to dye a lot of yarn. So much yarn, like every day. It's going to be uh, pretty impossible. I have like over 100 each day to dye, so pray for me. It's going to be interesting. But, uh, It'll be, it's going to be a challenge. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. She's got this, guy. She's done worse. I got it. I have. Yeah, definitely. So it was funny when we went to the Starbucks. It was right by the abattoir that I used to work at to collect my brain tissues. And I was like, somehow I always end up back here. Why does my life come full circle? Why does that always happen? <laughs> it was reminding me to go home. It was like, you don't want to end up back there. Go. And Amber was like, are you sure you don't want to stay? And I was like, no. I think that we're going to slaughter our house together. No, okay. I don't. <laughs> I'll be back now. We're trying to plan a trip for uh, March. March or February if I can get things done. Yeah. February is really expensive to fly. Is it? Ooh. It's like $200 there. Ooh. Still might be worth it. We might do that. Mm, probably March. Probably March. We'll figure it out. Because Amber's getting married. Wedding dress shopping. Oh, March. Perfect time to go wedding dress shopping. No, not until next time. Oh, right. Fine. Well, Just soon. She's, she's rushing it. Uh, I got two years and I have no You decisions. guys were doing a seating plan. I'm not no, that's rushing. Him, that's him, okay? That's him, she says. He's a planner. It's bad. He, like, asked me all the time. He's like, what do you think about this layout? And I'm like, wow, it's a wedding. All right, I don't know. <laughs> Amber's like, I don't want to make any decisions. Everybody else, just make the decisions. Let me know. I'll show up. I might be wearing white. <laughs> Like, I got what I wanted, which was the ring and the husband. So yes, everything we're else, good. We're good. I get the color scheme. Have they seen your ring? Hold your hand on me, throw. Beautiful. Excuse it my ugly nails. It is the prettiest <laughs> ring. Look at it. Peekaboo diamonds. So pretty. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys when I get back. <laughs>